Welcome back to our videos on biology from 4 and from 5 in this channel called Learn Bio with Janet. Today we'll be studying the role of hormones and this is the second video on hormones, so it's part 2. The first video was entitled The Endocrine System. Now this video is for the fifth formers of the year 2020, this year, KBSM syllabus. And it involves chapter 3. The subtopic is 3.3 .3 on the endocrine system and hormones. The learning outcomes for this subtopic on endocrine glands and hormones are as follows. First, we must be able to label the main glands of the endocrine system if we are given a diagram of the glands. Secondly, name the main hormones produced by each endocrine gland. And thirdly, state the functions of the hormones involved in some physiological processes like growth and reproduction. In the previous video on the endocrine system, the first video, we were introduced to the six endocrine glands that we have to discuss. Huh? And you must know their location. Pituitary gland is in the brain, thyroid gland in the neck area. Also, you have to know the structures, how they look like. Adrenal gland is uh, found above the kidney, it's like a triangle. Pancreas looks a bit like a leaf, like that. Huh? It's found near to the, in between the two kidneys. Okay, it's part of the digestive system also. Ovaries found on the left and right side of the left and right side of the uterus and testes, pair of testes. Here's an overview of what we're going to study. Firstly, the hypothalamus is a part of the brain that's close to the pituitary gland. It connects the nervous system to the endocrine system and it controls the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland on in turn will control the other glands. Now pituitary gland is the master gland which controls the secretion from other glands. So it produces some of its own hormones that control the body processes directly. For example, GH is growth hormone that controls growth of bones and tissues. ADH is antidiuretic hormone that controls the blood osmotic pressure in the body. This means it controls the water and salt balance in the body. Secondly, we have the thyroid gland situated in the neck region that produces thyroxine and this hormone is very important to regulate metabolism and to regulate the rate of respiration too. Thirdly, we have the adrenal gland that secretes uh, two hormones here that we have to study. It secretes adrenaline to help the body respond to stress or emergency situations. So when the body is facing stress, it will the adrenaline is released very quickly to stimulate the heart to beat faster, to pump more blood to the tissues. All this is to help the person produce more energy to respond to the stress. Adrenal gland also secretes aldosterone, which is a hormone to regulate the reabsorption of salt in the kidneys when a person lacks salt. Okay, so ADH here from pituitary gland regulates the reabsorption of water aldosterone regulates the reabsorption of salt. Now, number four, pancreas, as shown here, produces insulin and glucagon to help regulate the blood sugar level. Okay, for example, if the blood sugar level is too high after a meal of carbohydrates, insulin is produced to, con uh, to stimulate the conversion of excess blood glucose to glycogen to lower the blood sugar level. Number five, testes is the a uh, male reproductive organ, it produces a hormone called testosterone, the male sex hormone. Functions will be discussed later. Number six, ovary is the female reproductive organ. It produces two female sex hormones called estrogen and progesterone. We'll discuss this uh, later on. The major glands of the endocrine system are the pituitary gland, thyroid gland, adrenal glands, pancreas, and the gonads, meaning the reproductive organs, that is the testes and ovaries. So testes and ovaries 
are reproductive organs that produce the gametes. For example, testes produces the sperms, ovaries produce the ova or ovum. But apart from that, both are endocrine glands that secrete the sex hormones. Number two, the hypothalamus is the structure or the tissue that controls the pituitary gland in the brain. So the hypothalamus is a part of the brain that is very close to the pituitary gland and it controls the pituitary gland. In turn, the pituitary gland will control the other glands, the endocrine glands. Number three, the pituitary gland secretes a number of hormones. Some of its hormones are used to regulate the body functions directly. For example, growth hormone stimulates the growth of bones and tissues, uh, GH. And antidiuretic hormone, ADH, stimulates uh, the reabsorption of water from the tubule or the nephron into the blood. We'll study this later on. Pituitary gland also secretes a number of hormones to control the activities of the other endocrine glands. So that here it helps to control the activities of other endocrine glands. For example, thyroid stimulating hormone from pituitary gland, TSH, stimulates the thyroid gland. As you can see from the name, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. So it stimulates the thyroid gland to produce the hormone thyroxine. Now, one of the past year exam questions is like this. Why is the pituitary gland called the master gland? So we can say that pituitary gland is called the master gland because it secretes some hormones that control the secretion of hormones from other endocrine glands. So these other endocrine glands have to wait for the hormone from master, the master gland huh, to be stimulated so that they can be stimulated and then they will secrete their own hormones. Take for example TSH uh, secreted from the pituitary gland here. Thyroid stimulating hormone. When it, when it reaches the thyroid gland, it will stimulate the thyroid gland to produce thyroxine. Okay. Uh, here is the position of the hypothalamus just next to the pituitary gland in the brain. Another example is ACTH which is, which is adrenocorticotrophic hormone. It stimulates the adrenal gland to secrete its hormones. Okay, then other than that pituitary gland secretes FSH and LH that acts on the ovary and the testes. So all these diagrams below here are the target organs for the hormones from the pituitary gland. We will be studying the function of these hormones in the next, uh, in next few slides. Now ADH FSH and LH, uh, we'll study the function afterwards. ADH acts on the kidney tubules to cause the reabsorption of water into the blood. Huh? And then oxytocin will act on the muscles of the uterus and cause them to contract during childbirth. P then the pituitary gland also secretes the growth hormones which stimulates the growth of bones and muscles and also the synthesis of proteins. There's one more hormone which is prolactin. So we'll study the function of that too afterwards. Here are the functions of the hormones from the pituitary gland. There are eight in all and in the previous video we have discussed the function of thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates the thyroid gland to synthesize and secrete thyroxine, follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates the development of follicles containing the ovum in the ovary. Now, these ones that are underlined and in purple are additional ones that were not included in the last video. But since it is uh, stated in the syllabus, well, we have to write it down. Huh? So it stimulates the production of mature eggs and sperms. Actually, it is the same as this function. It stimulates the development of follicles concern, containing the ovum. So it will cause the ovum to mature huh? or the eggs to mature in the ovary. So eggs and ovum are the same. Never mind, just write it down. Huh? Luteinizing hormone stimulates ovulation. That one we have discussed. Now we can add on. And the formation of the corpus luteum. 
uh, stimulates formation of corpus luteum or corpus luteum formation in females. Corpus luteum will be mentioned and discussed in chapter 4, so don't worry about that. Then it stimulates production of sex hormones in males. So this is the new thing that was not included in the last video. So write it down. The fourth hormone from pituitary gland is growth hormone, as we have discussed in the first video. So here I add on one more point. Huh? It's growth hormone stimulates protein synthesis in the body and the growth of bones and tissues. So you can add on, uh, stimulates protein synthesis, as is discussed in the textbook. Now, antidiuretic hormone, ADH, stimulates water reabsorption from urine in the collecting duct. That this we'll discuss later, the collecting duct. It back into blood uh, in the kidneys when a person lacks water. So antidiuretic hormone is produced in larger quantity when a person doesn't drink enough water so that the water can be reabsorbed back into the blood from the urine that has already been formed. Okay, so that the blood has more water. Now prolactin, this is the new hormone that we have not discussed. It stimulates milk synthesis and secretion from the mammary glands and this occurs for a woman who has uh, just given birth. Huh? So prolactin will be produced to stimulate milk synthesis and secretion from the mammary glands to provide the breast milk for the baby, newborn baby. Oxytoxin is also uh, a female a hormone for, for females. is for the pregnant women, especially during childbirth. When a woman is going about to give uh, birth to a child, the Uterine muscles or the muscles of the uterus must contract very strongly and vigorously to push the baby out from the uterus. Okay, so oxytocin will be produced to stimulate the contraction of the uterine muscles during childbirth, and this is what uh, causes the pains uh, in the uterus region. This is called the labor pains. Okay, when the baby is being pushed out. That's when the oxytocin is uh, working to stimulate the contraction of the uterine muscles. Okay, lastly, we have adrenocorticotrophic hormone, ACTH. A-C-T-H. Huh? Sorry, A-C-T and the H is here, hormone. It stimulates the adrenal glands to release their hormones. Huh? So, ACTH is actually from the pituitary gland gland, pituitary gland, and it stimulates the adrenal glands to release their own hormones. Right, so here I have an acronym to help you remember the eight, the eight hormones from pituitary gland. Okay, you can either uh, use fog at the Alps. Huh? So fog means like a mist like that, huh? uh, water vapor huh? in the air. Alps is uh, the mountain range huh? in Europe, the highest Mountains are found there for Europe. The S has no meaning here. Huh? So FOC stands for FSH, oxytoxin, GH, then A is for ADH, antidiuretic hormone, T is for TSH, at, huh? this at, ALPS. The other A is for ACTH, L is for luteinizing hormone, and P is for prolactin. Okay, fog at the Alps. Or if you uh, prefer this acronym, PA at the golf club. You know, some people's father play golf, huh? like, likes to play golf. Some people, huh, their fathers like to play golf, so they may be always at the golf club. Huh? So PA is at the golf club. Club is not used, huh? it's just PA at golf. So you can check, huh? you have the eight hormones secreted from pituitary gland here also. Okay, so take your pick and you can memorize it and try to test yourself whether you can find the eight hormones in this in this acronym or this acronym. Huh? So through testing, you'll begin to remember the various hormones that are found in the pituitary gland and always review it constantly to make it work. So we have finished discussing all the hormones in the pituitary gland. Let's continue with the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is situated 
in the neck region. Okay, around the near to the vocal cords and the is on the trachea uh, itself. So it secretes only one hormone, but that hormone is very important for health. Uh, it's called tyroxine. And thyroid gland is stimulated by the hormone from pituitary gland, which is TSH. So when TSH is sent to the thyroid gland, then thyroid gland will secrete its hormone tyroxine. Now what's the function of tyroxine? It regulates the body's metabolism. For example, it regulates the rate of respiration. The more tyroxine that's produced, the higher the rate of respiration. Huh? And more heat will be produced, more energy will be produced. The lower the rate, the, the lower the level of tyroxine, the less the rate of respiration. Okay? But for children, it is also very important to stimulate the normal physical and mental development. So children need tyroxine in order to um, grow normally, physically and mentally. We'll discuss the effects of lack of tyroxine uh, in children in the next video. Okay, then you see how important it is. Just to say that, uh, okay, I'd like to say that without tyroxine or with a low level of tyroxine, children will have their physical and mental development retarded or slowed down. Now, if they have lack of tyroxine, children will have retarded physical and mental development. The third gland is the adrenal gland, which secretes two hormones, adrenaline and aldosterone. Location of adrenal gland is just above the kidney. So, each person has a pair of adrenal glands. Now, let's talk about the first hormone from adrenal gland, adrenaline. Adrenaline is produced when a person is in a stressful situation, in fear, in shock, or during an emergency situation. Suddenly, the mind becomes more alert and the adrenaline will flow, and then it will increase the heartbeat rate, metabolic rate, breathing rate. So when heartbeat rate increases, then the blood pressure will also increase. Huh? Uh, blood glucose level will increase. More glucose will be uh, formed or converted. More glucose will be produced uh, from the conversion of glycogen to glucose. Huh? It's to give you more energy. And the flow of blood will go to the muscles. So all this is to help a person uh, have more energy. To help the person have more energy during stress, fear or shock, so that she can respond better. Okay. Now, aldosterone stimulates the reabsorption of sodium ions or salts into the blood in the kidney when a person lacks salt. So just like ADH just now, uh, stimulates the reabsorption of water, right? So ADH is from pituitary gland. Uh. Now here we have this hormone called aldosterone from the adrenal gland. It stimulates the reabsorption of sodium ions into the blood, not water already. Huh? When a person lacks salt, so if a person doesn't eat enough salt, then uh, the adrenal gland will secrete more aldosterone to stimulate the reabsorption of the sodium ions back into blood from the urine. The fourth endocrine gland is the pancreas, which is found near the, the kidney and the adrenal glands. It secretes two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Insulin stimulates the conversion of excess glucose into glycogen, especially when the blood glucose level is higher than normal. For example, after taking a meal of carbohydrates or sweet food, uh, then the blood glucose level will rise above normal. Then insulin will be secreted to stimulate conversion of this excess glucose into glycogen which is stored in the muscle and the liver cells so it will lower the blood glucose level glucagon helps to stimulate conversion of glycogen to glucose especially when a person has not for example has skipped a meal uh, and has not enough glucose in the blood so when blood glucose level is too low glucagon will be secreted to stimulate the breakdown of glycogen in the liver into glucose to increase the blood glucose level and bring it up back to normal. So these two hormones are involved in 
regulation of blood sugar level and it is a type of a form of homeostasis maintenance of the constant internal environment the testis secretes the hormone testosterone the male hormone male sex hormone which stimulates the development of secondary sexual characteristics in males around the age of 14 when this hormone is secreted it will cause the secondary sexual characteristics to develop in males such as the growth of beard the lowering of the voice and the development of muscles it also stimulates the production of sperms and this is called spermatogenesis in the testes and stimulates the development of the testes the six endocrine gland that we are going to study are the ovaries which are found on both sides of the uterus so an ovary is a reproductive organ that produces the female gamete or ovum but it's also an endocrine gland because it secretes estrogen and progesterone these are the two female sex hormones let's look at the function of estrogen estrogen stimulates the development of the secondary sexual characteristics in females during puberty around the age of 12 years so around this age the estrogen is produced and secreted so that it is at a high concentration and then it will cause the start of menstruation which is the monthly bleeding or the period in women and girls and another secondary sexual characteristic is the widening of the hips and the accumulation of fat in certain parts of the body so number two estrogen promotes the repair of the uterine lining or the endometrium in the menstrual cycle now referring to the picture of the uterus here the uterus has two walls huh? the first wall is the muscular has two layers huh? so the first layer is the muscular wall which is the permanent wall there but there's a second layer called the endometrium which is built up every month as a preparation for the implantation of an embryo in the fallopian tube so this layer of called the endometrium is a layer of blood and tissues so every month in every monthly uh, menstrual cycle in the menstrual cycle this layer will be built up slowly and it's the estrogen that stimulates the building up or the repair of the uterine wall eh? and the production of the endometrium okay the build up of this endometrium in the menstrual cycle in preparation for implantation or attachment of an embryo on it but should there be no fertilization and no embryo formed in the fallopian tube then this endometrium will break down and that's when the menstruation comes we'll study more of this in the next chapter chapter 4 okay so don't worry about that now it stimulates the development of ova or ovum so estrogen is produced by the ovary and it also stimulates the development of the ovum uh, inside the ovary here next we have progesterone which stimulates the development of the uterine lining in the menstrual cycle similar function to estrogen just that progesterone is secreted later in the menstrual cycle and it will carry on to stimulate the development of this endometrium too in the menstrual cycle and when there's no uh, fertilization and no embryo to attach to the endometrium then the endometrium will break down so in this way by stimulating the development of the uterine lining or endometrium it prepares the uterus for implantation of a developing embryo let us now categorize the hormones that we have studied into three categories based on their functions which hormones are involved in growth reproduction or homeostasis let's start with growth growth hormone is of course involved in growth so growth hormone stimulates the growth of bones and muscles thyroid stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxine the hormone thyroxine and what does what is the function of the hormone thyroxine in growth it stimulates the physical and mental development of a child what hormones are involved in reproduction follicle stimulating hormone which stimulates the follicles as its name implies huh? 
It stimulates the follicle concern containing the ovum to be developed in the ovary. Luteinizing hormone stimulates ovulation, which is the release of the ovum, or what is known as secondary oocyte, from ovary into the fallopian tube. We'll be studying more of this in the next chapter, chapter 4, so do not worry about secondary oocyte and other terms. Estrogen and progesterone stimulates the build up, building up of the endometrium, which is the layer of blood and tissues in the uterus, to prepare for the implantation of an embryo okay, in the menstrual cycle. Androgens are male sex hormones, one of which is testosterone. Testosterone stimulates the production of sperms from the testes. Which hormones are involved in homeostasis? So homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. Example is the regulation of blood glucose level. And the hormones involved are insulin and glucagon. For example, insulin stimulates the conversion of excess blood glucose right into glycogen when the blood glucose level is too high so it will lower the blood glucose level we'll be studying more about these hormones in homeostasis so i'll just give a very brief outline antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone are involved in the regulation of blood osmotic pressure and blood osmotic pressure has to do with water and salt balance in the blood and the interstitial fluid. For example, antidiuretic hormone stimulates the reabsorption of water from the tubules in the kidney back into the blood, especially when someone lacks water. Aldosterone stimulates the reabsorption of salt back into the blood when someone lacks salt. This is done in the kidneys. Adrenaline and tyroxine are involved in the regulation of body temperature, especially when someone is feeling very cold, body temperature is below normal, more adrenaline and tyroxine will be released or secreted to increase the rate of metabolism so that more heat is produced to increase the body temperature. Let us discuss a hot question shown here. The diagram below shows the components of two different coordinating systems a and B. Based on the diagram, compare and contrast system A and system B. 10 marks. Okay. It's a Solan Ramalan or uh, SPM forecast question. Now in system A, we see the spinal cord and we see here a pin pricking the skin. And then these are all the neurons. Uh, afferent neuron, interneuron, efferent neuron. And the muscle is shown here. So from here, can you tell me what the, the action is? What is this action called? What type of action is it? Yes, it's a reflex action, and that is the withdrawal of the hand from the sharp object or painful object. So what is the system involved, the coordinating system involved? Yes, it is the nervous system. Now in system B, we see a structure like this, secreting growth hormone that acts on the target tissues like the bones and the muscles. What is the name for this structure here? It is the pituitary gland, okay, that secretes growth hormone to stimulate the bones and the muscles to grow. So what is system B? System B is not hormones, right? System B is called the, it's a coordinating system, so it's the endocrine system, okay? So based on the diagram, compare and contrast system A, the nervous system, and system B, the, the endocrine system. Okay, so after analyzing the diagram and identifying your system, you are ready to discuss the differences. Now we have to compare and contrast, so we discuss the similarities and the differences. And you must have both similarities and differences. So you can try the answer first, try to write down your answer, and later you can compare with the answer here. Now, firstly, we have to identify system A. System A is the nervous system, whereas system B is the endocrine system. Okay, so similarities between system A and B are 
Both systems are involved in the coordination of activities in the body. Now, if it's already mentioned uh, in the first in the question, in the previous slide, that they are both coordinating systems, then you don't get any marks for it. Uh, but I just write it down here in case it is not mentioned in the question. There is a coordinating system. Then you can write it in, you get one mark. B, both systems respond to stimuli, different types of stimuli. For example, for the first uh, diagram, for the nervous system, the stimuli is the pain. Uh, okay. Then C, both systems help maintain homeostasis, like the regulation of uh, temperature, which we will study later. Now, differences are as follows. A, uh, now you must write down A, don't just write nervous system, because the question is referring to the system A and B. Uh, so system A here, system B here, but we write in bracket the name of the system so that we will not get confused. Okay, so a consists of a network of neurons or nerve cells. B consists of a group of endocrine glands, such as the pituitary gland. In A, uh, A uses electrical impulses, nervous impulses or nerve impulses, and neurotransmitters are used at the synapse uh, or the gaps to send information, whereas B uses hormones to send information or messages. So here, Every similarity is one mark and every difference is one mark. So make sure that the similarities and differences add up to 10 marks. Let us look at other differences shown here. For nervous, the nervous system or A, neurons are the ones that transmit the impulses, the nerve cells. For B, blood transports hormones throughout the body. Number four, information is transmitted rapidly in the neurons through the electrical impulses. Uh, it's very fast, like 100, up to 100 meters per second or more. For B, the information is transmitted slowly because the blood transports the hormones. The hormones are the chemical messengers that carry the information. And blood has to circulate around the whole body. It takes uh, some time. Number five, response is faster but short-lived for A. Example, withdrawal of hand from the sharp object. So this is a reflex action. And the response, uh, withdrawing the hand, is very fast. But after that, there is no more, uh, no more action uh, that occurs after you have withdrawn your hand. Uh, it's over. For B, the response is slower and longer lasting. For example, growth hormone stimulates the growth of bones in the body. And it, can, uh, it begins in childhood and then it can extend through many years until adult stage. Number six, the effect is temporary and reversible. For example, bending your arm when you withdraw your arm from the, the hot object. Huh? So it's temporary and reversible because after that, you can straighten back your arm. Now for B, endocrine system, the effect may be permanent and irreversible. For example, when the bones have grown, they cannot reverse and become shorter again. Huh? So the growth of bones is permanent. Number seven, effects or responses are localized. That means confined to a small area, like in your arm. Uh, the electrical impulse will reach the biceps and then only that. And the biceps is the only muscle that contracts. Okay, the biceps in the arm. But for B, the effects or responses are widespread because the blood will carry the hormones to all the target organs throughout the body. And for growth, all the parts of the body Many parts of the body will grow. Okay, so bones in many parts of the body will also grow. So the response are widespread. Muscles will also grow all over the body. Now, number eight, A produces voluntary and involuntary actions. For example, in the diagram is a reflex action, which is a, an involunt involuntary action. And also, uh, nervous system also produces voluntary actions, such as talking and kicking a ball, for example. Uh, that can be controlled by your conscious mind and your will. But for the endocrine system, B, it produces involuntary actions. Example is adrenaline stimulates the increase in the heartbeat rate. So this type of action, increase in the heartbeat rate, is not under the control of the conscious mind or will. It cannot be controlled uh, by the conscious mind or will. So that ends our... Uh, video for today. 
and thanks for watching please share comment like and subscribe so i will i will see you in the next video goodbye